Welcome to your Selah moment for today. We're so excited to continue our series titled What is Life? Today's our final part of this uh, this passage of scripture that we've been reading. Uh, you know, over the past few weeks, we spent some time in the same book in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, and we're looking at a particular passage. This passage shows us what Jesus has to say about what is important in life and what isn't. In essence, Jesus answers the question that has crossed all of our minds at one point or another. Again, what is life? It's important, what's not. What is a good life defined by? And so, week one, we saw that Jesus' encounter with a man um, who was more concerned with earthly possessions. And so Jesus then shares the parable of a rich fool with him, in which he explains to us that our lives are not defined by our material possessions. Um, the world seems to have a standard by which we are defined if we're successful or not, depending upon the things that we have. But Jesus it comes in stark contrast with this notion in this passage of Scripture. Week 2, we got to look at Jesus talking about the raven. It tells us in verse 24 to consider the raven, that if God provides for it, then how much more will he provide for his children that are made in his image and in his likeness? And so we are made aware in week 2 that our lives are greater than our needs because God is our provider and he's the one that provides for our needs. So we should not worry, which brings us to the thought of week three. Jesus teaches us that our worry adds nothing to our lives. That in fact, it takes away from our lives. And so in week three, we came to a conclusion that maybe our worry is useful though. The inclination or the desire to worry should instead lead us not to worry, but instead lead us to trust in God. It's an opportunity for you to put your faith in action. So we've seen in the last three weeks, we've talked about what life isn't. Today, briefly, we're going to look about what the scripture says when it comes to what our life is. Luke chapter 12, verse 29 through 31 is what we're reading today. It says, And do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be worried. For all the nations of the world seek after these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Verse 31. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. So basically, verse 31 is where we're going to focus on today, and Jesus makes it quite simple in this passage. The next, or the past few weeks, Jesus has identified all the traps that we as humans fall into when it comes to our pursuit for a good life. And here he makes it plain for everyone to see. Three words. He tells us, seek his He's talking about God's kingdom, talking about the presence of God. Why? Well, it's pretty simple. Why should we seek his kingdom? Well, because that's what we were made to do. This is how the creator defined us. This is how he designed us, that we would seek after him. So our greatest need, he identifies it here, isn't that we would strive for our daily needs, but instead that we would strive after God. God and needing him is our greatest need. The neediest people in the world are, are those who don't have the kingdom of God. So when we seek God and his kingdom, not only do we fulfill our greatest need for him, but we also get the smaller needs thrown in. That's what the verse tells us. Seek him in his kingdom and all these things will be added to you. All these things will be added to you. This is vitally important. Because it's possible for us to meet our worldly needs or our earthly needs, yet not fulfill the greatest need, your need for God. But without God, we know that we are broke. That makes me think about a passage of scripture, Mark chapter 8, uh, verse 36. It says, For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and for, uh, forfeit his soul? Or some translations say lose his soul. Our lives are more than stuff. We've seen that from week one. Our lives are more than our needs and worrying about the things we need. We've seen in week two and week three. And our lives are made to seek the one who made us and to live in relationship with him. So it's quite simple today. You were made to seek the Father. You were made to live in community with the Father. This is what we are called to do. And so I think in identifying the question, what is life? What's important about life? Well, we have to seek the one who created our lives in order to, to find that answer. 
And his answer for that is found right here in the scripture. Seek him. Seek his kingdom. Seek his will. Seek his purpose. So I want to share with you uh, a passage, uh, the same passage of scripture, but in a different translation. It's the message translation, which was written by Eugene Peterson. Um, and I think it's brilliant in describing exactly what we're talking about here today. So I want to share it with you. It says, what, am I tr- what I'm trying to do here is to get you to relax, not be so preoccupied with getting so that you can respond to God's giving. People who don't know God and the way that he work fuss over these things. But you know both God and how he works. Steep yourself in God reality, God initiative, God provisions. You'll find your everyday human concerns will be met. Don't be afraid of missing out. You are my dearest friends. The Father wants to give you the very kingdom itself. Then verse 33 through 34. It says, be generous. Give to the poor. Get yourself a bank that can't go bankrupt. A bank in heaven far from bank robbers. Safe from embezzlers. A bank you can bank on. It's obvious, isn't it? The place where your treasure is, is the place you will most want to be and end up being. That reminds me of that uh, song we were talking about. It's where you invest your love is where you invest your life. So if you find yourself listening today and you have a hard time parting with your earthly possessions, I think this passage is for you. It tells us here that there are things much more important than these things. Don't put your faith in them. Put your faith in God. I think it's our natural reaction to gather the things that we think we'll need in preparation. We think of ourselves as savvy and and being responsible. But I think as believers, we're called to something more. To relinquish our ability of thinking that we can take care of ourselves. Instead, depending on God and living in his will and his plan for us. So, if you carry the burden of your life on your own shoulders, Jesus is speaking to you today. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 says, Cast all your cares on him, because he cares about you. And if you're lost today, not knowing what to do with your life, how should you live? Well... Luke chapter 12, verse 31, makes it quite clear. Seek his kingdom, and he'll take care of the rest. Seek God and his will. Become or recognize your place as a child in his life. You're his child. You're made in his image, made in his likeness. Accept his sacrifice that he made for you, that he would die on the cross to redeem you to the Father, so that you can spend eternity in heaven. This is something worth living So I think if you're thinking about how to invest your life, I think you should invest it in something that matters. Invest it in God's plans. So I'll close our time today, Psalm 23. This is the Lord my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me rod and your staff that comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, and you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So, go about your day knowing that you have a Father in heaven who cares for you, who will provide for your needs. Your job is simply to submit and to do His will. Whatever He's leading you to today. And the the specifics of that can be found through the scripture and through prayer. So, God bless you. Hope you do well. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for joining us. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you won't miss the video. See you next time.